in the arms of Norfolk, Norwich and Great Yarmouth, which amalgamated in 1974 to form the Norfolk Fire Service. The fifth largest of the Shire counties, Norfolk is one of Britain's major growth areas. Renowned for its agriculture, it's now experiencing a surge in light industry and commerce, with a corresponding rise in population. Norwich itself has developed mainly in the service sector. With a decline of some traditional industries, the city has become a centre for office development, providing headquarters for a number of nationally known companies. Kingsland and Yarmouth, the county's other two main centres, are busy ports. Yarmouth serves the offshore oil and gas rigs, both handle imports and exports, and provide ferry services to the continent. The county headquarters of Norfolk Fire Service are at Heatherset, five miles from Norwich, and there are divisional headquarters at Norwich, Kings Lynn and Great Yarmouth. The county has 40 fire stations, 34 of them manned by retained personnel, those who have other jobs most of the time, but can be called to the station on a personal pocket alerter, a bleeper to most of us. Of the remaining six stations, those at Norwich City and Sproston are full-time, Great Yarmouth and Kings Lynn are full-time with backup from retained personnel, while those at Galston and Thetford are day-manned. Thetford, Fakenham and North Walsham have full-time officers to support retained stations. All this, salaries for 770 personnel, appliances, equipment, training and maintenance of buildings, has to be met from an annual budget of just over £7 million. The service has a large fleet of fire engines, including 65 water tenders, four hydraulic platforms, five emergency tenders, and a number of other specialist appliances. In recent years, there's been a dramatic increase in the number of road accidents, with many people being trapped in their vehicles. This has meant an advance into an area which requires specialist cutting equipment and specialised training to deal with the difficult and varied situations that arise. One of the most recent advances in cutting equipment has been the introduction of hydraulic rescue apparatus, a mixture of spreaders and cutting jaws. In this training exercise, they are being used to remove the roof from the car and to pull the steering wheel away from the casualty. In the last 12 months, the brigade has attended 384 major road accidents and rescue equipment has been used on over 100 occasions. The latest addition to the emergency tender fleet is the Mercedes, seen here with its lighting unit in use. A major current problem is the ever-increasing use of chemicals. Every day, many thousands are processed and transported all over the country. So, like other services, Norfolk has had to develop a chemical incident unit. The equipment carried by this special vehicle includes drums to seal chemicals and compounds to absorb or neutralise them. Firemen dealing with chemical leaks face danger from corrosive substances or toxic gases, so they must wear protective clothing. Two types of suit are available, a chemical protection suit and a gas-tight suit which gives total protection. A fireman dealing with toxic gases must also wear breathing apparatus. In the last 10 years, this has become one of his most important pieces of equipment and has to be worn at most tyres. It consists of a cylinder of air, demand regulators to adjust the flow of high-pressure air and a mask. The wearer can work for periods of about 30 minutes in atmospheres where it would otherwise be impossible to breathe. The difficulty of finding one's way around smoke-filled buildings makes it essential to follow proper procedures, and special communication equipment has been developed for this purpose. Training is vital. Anyone losing his way in a building filled with smoke will die unless he reaches safety before the apparatus runs out of air.
Norfolk has been developing purpose-built chambers where fire conditions can be reproduced. Inside are partitions to simulate rooms and crawlways. These put firemen into difficult cramped conditions of the kind they may well encounter at a real fire. Smoke and heat are produced in the building and noises of crackling fire and people screaming or shouting can be introduced by means of a loudspeaker. All this creates the most realistic conditions. If anything goes wrong during training, fans can quickly extract the smoke. Other kinds of equipment are being developed so that firemen can see through smoke and detect heat sources. One example is the thermal imaging camera. This detects heat sources in the building and gives firemen a better chance of finding both the source of the fire and casualties overcome by smoke. The brigade's fire investigation team uses the camera to discover where a fire started, even some time after it has been extinguished. Firefighting remains the chief problem, and Norfolk's fire engines have to be of high quality to deal with a wide variety of incidents. Each water tender carries 1,800 litres of water and has its own major pump, which enables it to deliver water at extremely high pressures. Each vehicle also carries a portable pump, which can be carried across rough terrain to a source of water which might otherwise be inaccessible. A new development, the first in operational use in the United Kingdom, is an electronically operated automatic pressure control unit. The required pressure is pre-selected and maintained independent of output pressures. The purpose is to free the pump operator to help with more vital work during the early stages of a fire. Norfolk has a large number of waterways and people may become trapped in overturned pleasure craft or drive off the road into a river. In 1984, the brigade introduced an emergency water rescue unit, the first of its kind in the country. The police have such units but are not always able to respond immediately to an emergency and the brigade unit was developed with this in mind. Norfolk now has a team of fully trained divers and a number of attendants. All those involved are on call around the clock. Norfolk has a long coastline, and a brigade may also be called upon to assist with firefighting at sea. Training of over 100 personnel has been undertaken in a joint exercise with RAF Coltishall, and the service is ready to respond if required. Such a large fleet of specialised vehicles demands an efficient workshop to deal not only with everyday maintenance, but with breakdowns and emergencies during an incident. Vehicles are built to an extremely high standard and demand the highest level of maintenance. Each of them is brought to the workshop every three years for a major overhaul, in addition to regular and annual servicing. As well as carrying out vehicle maintenance, workshop staff maintain the pumps and conduct annual inspections and tests of ladders and other equipment. The control room at fire station headquarters is manned 24 hours a day. Emergency calls are received via the 999 system or automatic alarms and stations are alerted by a British telecom Solent system. In those manned full time, personnel are called on the tannoy. A signal to a transmitter at the local fire station puts out a bleep to alert retained firemen within a radius of just over a mile. Fire brigade. Yes. What's the address? South Pound Road, Great Yarmouth. Can I have your telephone number, please? Thank you. The fire brigade's on its way. In the year between April 1985 and April 1986, the brigade answered 7,707 calls, the highest on record. Nearly 4,500 were to fires, a reduction on the previous year. But false alarms have almost doubled in 10 years, and special service emergency calls, including road and chemical accidents, are up by a third. During an emergency, crews are in constant radio contact with the control room. Hello, Mr. Anderson. Good afternoon. Uh, we're here this afternoon to have a look around your premises uh, in relation to fire prevention. So, if we all come in and have a look around? Yes, come this way. All right, thank you.
As a result of the new legislation, the range of premises subject to inspection by fire prevention officers constantly increases, over 15,500 in the last 12 months. Well over 2,000 are issued with fire certificates. Hotels, guest houses, factories, offices, larger shops and stores. As well as all these, Norfolk Fire Service carried out nearly 1,800 inspections of licensed premises and over 3,000 of petroleum installations throughout the county. Should you in fact live in a house that's on a two or three or possibly four storey level, as you would do in a townhouse, then it might be wise to have one of these at each level. An important part of fire prevention is educating the public. The brigade is involved in numerous training sessions and lectures to all sorts of organisations, including those to do with children. A number of competitions and quizzes are held each year to encourage young children in fire prevention. Campaigns too are important, and currently the brigade is trying to encourage every private household in the county to fit a smoke detector. How does it work? Well, there are two types, basically. This one is a small ionisation chamber. It relies on a small radioactive source in a small chamber which ionises the atmosphere. Smoke particles entering that chamber alters the condition within that chamber and triggering an alarm, again sounding the signal. Norfolk has also introduced a volunteer cadet scheme, which enables young people from 13 to 18 years of age to learn about the fire service and fire prevention. The scheme is becoming so popular that there are now eight fire stations with cadet units. To get this piece of equipment into operation, we just push it out and here's the mask is ready for use. Training must play a very important part in the fireman's life. Promotion through the various ranks also has to be considered. And one programme the brigade has been involved in for a number of years is a joint scheme with the Norwich City Technical College in training for the Institution of Fire Engineers examinations. This scheme has proved extremely successful and last year saw the most passes in any centre in the United Kingdom. A particular note is that 20 retained members passed their preliminary certificate. As well as dealing with the present and the future, the brigade is also actively engaged in preserving the past. A museum has been set up at headquarters and is run by a member of the brigade's Historical and Preservation Society. One member of the brigade has recently written a book entitled The History of the Norwich Fire Brigade. Firemen continue to provide an essential service to the public, often facing untold and unknown dangers. Just 12 months ago, fireman Bruce Carter was killed when a building collapsed on him during a fire in the centre of Norwich. How better to remember him and all those firemen through Norfolk, who to protect the community, act with such courage and unselfishness, and to paraphrase...